Hey guys, Blazin Wrath here, and today we got a new Halo Infinite update regarding the PC version of the game. Now I won't be covering all the PC all the PC details because that shit is boring to me, and I'm sure all of those who play Halo on PC can expect top-notch PC features at launch. So that's why I think it's not worth talking about. It's just something PC players should expect. So without with that being said, let's begin. So Unishek introduces us to Jeff Guy and Mike Romero. Two gaming industry veterans that have 25 plus years of experience in the gaming industry. Jeff Guy joined 343 Industries two years ago, where, while Mike Romero is the head lead of the PC version of Halo Infinite, and they're both excited to bring Halo's latest entry into PC, as the franchise has a long history of being on console. So both Jeff and Mike basically talk about how excited they are for bringing Halo to PC, and they can't wait for players to get their hands on the game. Jeff Guy specifically mentions MCC and how the team working on that game has done a fantastic job bringing MCC to PC. He also says Halo Infinite can benefit from MCC's PC's mistakes and they can learn from that to make Halo Infinite a better game on PC. Mike Romero mentions briefly that to expect some PC settings to be included in the console version of Halo Infinite. Now let's take a look at some screenshots they shared right here. So here's this one. Looks cool, not much to see here because we've already seen a similar shot. This one however looks really nice. Looks very much like Halo CE, like in terms of like the Forerunner interior, with the way the lighting is too. But with what it looks like to me is Halo 3 detailing. Looks very nice. There are also banished crates in the background, right uh, in the far right. They kind of look like locust ammo crates from Gears of War. This one here shows out the different aspects, radio, uh, aspects ratios you can have on PC. Then we have this screenshot which pretty much speaks for itself. Next one showcases the same thing but with a different picture. Here we can finally see what the pause menu looks like in Halo Infinite and some PC settings. And in this screenshot they show off more PC settings. Jeff Guy mentions something really awesome here, so I'm just going to quote him word for word. So he says here, and I quote, We actually allow to host a local multiplayer server on your PC. Other players on your LAN, both PC and Xbox, are able to join your local server and play infinite multiplayer with you. We also have ranked and unranked matchmaking playlists where PC and Xbox can play together online. End quote. Mike Romero also adds on to this by saying, and I quote, Social playlists and custom matches are open to all. You can play on any platform and any device if anyone, with anyone you like. For ranked matches, we plan to restrict competitive playlists based on input type, not console versus PC. That's because we believe the input is the biggest differentiator in game playability, with things like aim assist on the controller or the precision of sniping with a mouse. You can play with the controller on your PC to play ranked with your console friends, or even mouse and keyboard on your console to play ranked with your PC friends." End quote. Here's another screenshot of more PC settings. Here's probably my favorite screenshot out of the ones we got. There's a lot to break down here, so... He okay, so the first thing I notice is the motion tracker range is 59 meters. In the demo, it was 31 meters, I believe. Nothing much to say about the Jackal here other than it's wearing new armor, which looks pretty cool. Next thing I notice is that there is a bungee style Guardian hologram in the background of the screenshot. That's very questioning when it comes to the story. I don't know, what do you guys make of this? The Brute here looks kind of flat when it comes to its skin and undersuit, but the armor and color palette looks very nice. The coloring reminds me of Halo 3, with the brown skin color of Halo 2. Then here we have the assault rifle, looking so much better than what we saw in the July reveal. They added the yellow stripe from Reach and changed up the ammo counter a bit. On the far right here, we can see one of those grunts we saw in, the, in toy form from the Mega Bloks in the game. He's carrying a plasma grenade uh, on his back this time around. Lastly, as we can see here in the UI here, uh, Chief is carrying either the sidekick pistol with an added attachment at the bottom of the barrel, or is this a completely new pistol? It's probably the sidekick pistol, just with an updated UI and the new attachment they added, but I could be wrong. 
as well as we can see here the left block here must be your grenades whereas the right block here shows your equipment continuing on on what they uh on what they have to say when it comes to crossplay and different input devices mike says and i quote we want to ensure fairness and adding pc into the mix opens pandora's box we felt like we had to make an anti-cheat solution that doesn't get in the way doesn't root your machine doesn't block your legitimate applications we want the most unobtrusive thing possible that ensures a safe way for everyone to play together for crossplay again we prioritize fairness without being too restrictive so we have to draw lines players are comfortable with input based restrictions for ranked matches while maintaining flexibility you don't have to buy the game on a different platform to play with your friends worst case you switch input devices we also want to ensure nobody feels like they're at any significant disadvantage because of the way they're playing within reason a 10 year old pc just isn't going to be fast as a brand new uh, uh, ultra high end pc if we do our job right in combination with our true skill 2 ranking system everyone should be able to trust they're getting a fair shake in the crossplay ecosystem end quote jeff doesn't feel comfortable about talking about the uh, anti-cheat in pc games so he brings over michael van Coopers. i hope i said his name right to vouch for him and he says and i quote thanks jeff we knew from the start that delivering an awesome pc game meant taking uh, cheating seriously and we're committing to doing it in a way that's respectful to the experience of legitimate players our anti-cheat philosophy is to make cheating more difficult in ways that don't involve kernel uh, drivers or background services we've done a lot of work securing the slipspace engine and developing novel ways to protect and change the game to slow down cheat development when people do cheat we're focused on catching them through their behavior and not from data that we've harvested from their machines. Combating cheaters is an ever evolving arms race and we're making the tech investments needed today to continue to fight for years to come." End quote. So that's uh, that's pretty good news. I mean, considering uh, from what I hear with the, you know Apex Legends or Call of Duty Modern Warfare and their like Battle Royale modes, I always hear a lot about like cheating and whatnot. So it seems like 343 might be, you know, is looking at that and hopefully when Halo Infinite comes out, since it, it is a free-to-play uh, model, hopefully uh, they'll be able to catch cheaters faster and more efficiently than what Apex and Modern Warfare Warzone has been suffering from, from what I hear. So here's the last screenshot and man, I can't wait to start exploring Zeta Halo. The gap on the left, the nice looking Forerunner textures on the beam tower here, some bridges here on the right, the broken halo ring in the background, as well as an interesting structure on the top right. Then there's the, that thing at the bottom that I have no idea what it is. Maybe a banished vehicle? Now finally, as usual, a word, a final word from Halo Infinite's creative director, Joseph State. And he says, and I quote, It's cliche to say a picture is, a thou is worth a thousand words, but honestly, I'm gobsmacked every time I see Halo Infinite in ultra-wide or super ultra-wide format. Halo games have always aspired to fully immerse you into a sci-fi world filled with mystery and adventure. But playing Infinite in 21x9 or 32x9, the Halo world enwraps you like never before, especially if you have one of them fancy curved ultra-wide monitors. And just wait until you see the game's cinematics in these formats. What do I think bears additional words aren't what features we're building for PC, but rather who is building the who is doing the building. One of the best parts of being the new guy on Halo Infinite is that I get to meet a whole bunch of people. While Jeff and Mike are too self effacing effecting effacing to say themselves in my career, they are two of the most talented, dedicated, and humble people I've ever met. They're working exceedingly hard to make Halo Infinite PC experience as great as it can possibly be. And the good news is, when I look across the whole team, Jeff and Mike aren't alone, not by a long shot. As we head into shutdown and polish phase of the project, I wish all of you could see the incredible work that I have the privilege of playing every day. The same intense commitment to making a game that you, Halo's most ardent fans, 
our love to play exists all across the team. Finally, a brief customer service announcement. While I hope you enjoyed this month's 1,000 word screenshots, we know the game videos are worth at least 10,000 words. And the great news is that summer. Oh boy, E3. <laughs> game industry event season is just around the corner, and there are glorious plans afoot. Stay tuned, Spartans. End quote. Now that concludes today's videos, guys. Lots of great things to hear about this time around. We're very close to E3, and I'm sure we're all dying to see more Halo Infinite footage. Remember to keep an eye out for Halo Infinite flight invitation in your emails. I'm predicting the flighting program for Infinite should begin at E3. Alright everyone, that's it for today, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.